Jimmy, back from killing some dwellers. Come on in. <laughs> You've been up too much lately. Nah, nah, me neither. I sometimes wish I'd join my dad with a family business. Why didn't you? Oh, the hey, Jimmy, over here. Roll over, you stupid. All right, Jim, how's things? You've been drinking in Brightwall again? And don't let anybody tell you, drinking alone is wrong. That's some of the best times I've had. Anyway, in you go then, mate. Jimmy, that really you? You look different somehow. Oh, well, your eyes are always that color. Nah, Jimmy's got periwinkle eyes like a beautiful summer morning sky. That's not him. It's not Jimmy. Welcome to the Sanctuary. I hope everything is in order. Jimmy was my mate! Die! Oh, 
You've left quite a trail of bodies. You're not one of Sabine's dwellers, that's for damn sure. But you'll die like one. This battle is yours. Kill me or let me live. It's your choice. And my men will honor it. We may be nothing but mercenaries, but we have our codes, like any other soldiers. We'll leave the dwellers be, no matter what you do. That is a warrior's promise. You have taken another step on the road to rule. Defeating Seika has won over many of the people he terrorized. Word is already spreading of your victory. It is a momentous occasion. So what?
I'm no expert on personal combat, but I would say, based on the fact that you're not dead, you acquitted yourself rather well. It's hard to believe that just a few days ago I was rousing you from a comfortable bed. It would seem that you have completed two of the tasks that Sabine set for you. If you return to Brighton, you will find Sir Walter has some news on how to fulfill the last requirement. Now, what's this? this ah, hello. Famous silver hen ale. I find it lends the brew a rather piquant flavor. Ah, here he is. We were just talking about you. Indeed. We have made a toast to your stupendous feat in ridding Miss Peak of Saker and his men. They have been a source of great distress for some time. Nobody will be more pleased than Sabine. His dwellers might find some peace now. Of course, nobody has suffered more than they. I've been telling Samuel here about the terrible situation they're in. He thinks he may be able to help. Uh, yes, well, uh, perhaps. I, I mean, of course. The thing is, as I was just explaining to Sir Walter, Brightwall has no overabundance of resources itself. The King's levies are rather steep, and we face shortages more often than is comfortable. But? But were you to improve things around Brightwall, the people would be most grateful. And when people are grateful, they're also charitable. I'm sure they would find it in their hearts to send aid to those poor people. There you have it. The way I see it, you will need all the followers you can get if you're going to lead a successful rebellion. What better time to start? I heartily agree with Sir Walter. Pardon me for overhearing. As it happens, I've learned of a promising... Ah! An excellent way to gain. You can now see the villagers in need. You can also see how many followers you must amass to impress Samuel and the people of Brightwall. Select a villager to help. By doing so, you will gain the respect and loyalty of others in the region. By completing quests... Oh, pinch, you foul, vile fiend! You uncouth wretch! You, good sir, you... Ah, you will find the legendary lost flame. Turn back now, mortal one. Stay away. Only death place. and insanity await you. Don't pick it up! No, really, I'm serious. <gasps> you lot just can't leave well enough alone, can you? literary tourist, bane of my afterlife. Listen, you. You're not getting my lost plate, you hear? It's rubbish. Worse than rubbish. I mean, what was I thinking, mixing tragedy and comedy? I must have been off my rocker. It would seem, my dear fellow, you have been apprehended by the ghost of Philip Morley. That makes us both his captives. I am Ransom Locke. If the name seems familiar, it is because I was once a detective of some renown. And yet, here I am, ready to live out the rest of my days trapped in a book. As far as I can deduce, we are currently in a scene from one of Morley's greatest romantic plays, the near tragedy of Oliver and Ethel. I believe if we are to escape, we must act out the scene. But performing is not one of my talents. If I am correct, putting on this costume should set things in motion.
my love, my life, my son. If thou wouldst but give me one sign, one gesture that would speak of your affections, then might I think this grey existence worth living. Ah, uh, yes, a classic moment in the play. You are Ethel, the beautiful young daughter of a dung merchant. Show Oliver that you love him, and we may be able to leave this scene. Cruel darts that strike my Shove it, Fatty! Stop! Thou hast driven a dagger into my breast and ended all hope of happiness. Thusly, I must end my life. Hark! A shadow approaches. Take me! And so I die. Well, it's an unorthodox reading of the text, but one cannot argue with the result. Hmm. I see you are gifted with remarkable literary cunning, but can you really comprehend the depths of my work? That we shall see. Ah, yes. This is undoubtedly a scene from one of Morley's earlier, funnier plays, Bloodbath at the Royal Court. And this must be your costume. The role of the fool is one filled with tragic depth. It will require a masterful performance. What fresh insolence is this? Out of my throne, you impertinent buffoon! Stand before you a king, and do your jester's duty! Tis a troublesome time for this court, and my crown grows heavy. So make me laugh, or I shall have your head. You look so cute in that crown. Why, Jester, I had no idea you felt that way about me. Hmm. Mm. So it's true! You do love me! You have no idea how difficult it's been watching you strut about in those magnificent feathers! How much I've wanted you! Then it is settled! Tomorrow we shall wed, and let anyone who frowns upon our union have his head cut off! Well, it's certainly a radical interpretation of the text, but effective nonetheless. You handle my royal dramas as well as you handle my romances. But will your versatility extend to the more subtle domains of theatre, I wonder? Oh dear. Unless I'm mistaken, this is a scene from Morley's notoriously violent historical epic, Titus the Mutilator, Part 2. Which would mean this is the gladiatorial arena from Act 5 where Titus is finally slaughtered by savage warriors seeking revenge. A favorite scene of mine as a child, I must admit. And here is Titus's famous costume. I had some pajamas that looked just like it. Put it on and you will take on the greatest role of your life. Titus, thy pox-membered body shall pay for thy monstrous villainy. My son lies dead because of you. Now shall revenge be mine. Cold is your corpse, and all the more flavoursome for it. 
do try to make your demise convincing. Stay back, you monster! Ooh, that shot looks nasty! Denied my world undone. I can't stand to live one second more. A tremendous performance. That's just the ending I wanted to see when I was a young boy attending the theater every weekend. I wonder what scene will follow now. Oh, what scene could possibly follow such a masterful rendition of my work? The way you improvise some of those roles, you brought new life to my words. I stand in awe. You have earned the prize no mortal has ever been honored with before. My missing play. I entrust it to you. For I know that you will do it justice. I call it the Ham Sandwich. A metaphorical title, of course. have retrieved our aged investigator. Happy Let's day! Save, have you, perchance, found... Oh, the joy in my bosom knows no bounds! Thank you a million times! Thank you! <laughs> His head bosom! It's already working! Comedy and tragedy will at last join hands! Hark! Bear witness to the tragic futility that is man. Oh, how it doth sear my senses to see paradise and yet to be barred. That reminds me of a great joke. A guard, a monk, and a chicken walk into a bar. Unfortunately, the bartender had had a mild heart attack that morning, so none of them get served. And yet what purpose doth heartache serve when the infinite dark blanket that is death Fall softly upon our still beating corpse. That reminds me of another one. A corpse walks into a bar and says, Can I have a lemonade? Certainly, replies the bartender. I've never seen a stiff drink. And so endeth our happy, sad play, which reminds us we are made of nothing but clay. There's time only for our fool to say, Great big giant bosoms! What the hell was that? Biggest load of old tosh I ever saw. It didn't even make sense. Worst play ever. I Dare I say, you're not... This is terrible. Somehow the gate got open, and all of my chickens have escaped. Right, you. You have several new suits. Those will make dressing easy. Need this. Contrary to what most people think, chickens. <laughs>
That's all of them. At last, the town can rest easy. Oh, Bernard, you've got to lock them up again. This isn't right. They deserve to be free. You're always on about the chickens and their... Right. It's like I've said all along. We have to kill them all. You bastard. You murderer. Look, you're either with me or you're one of them. Which is it? Well done. You have gathered quite an impressive following in Brightwall. This, this should be more than enough to convince this little hamlet to send aid to the dwellers. No. I believe Samuel awaits you at the town gates to express that very sentiment. 